Welcome to Retro Crisis. Please support the channel by subscribing. This here is the RGB Dual, or is it Dual? I'm not 100% sure, but as this is manufactured by a French company and I've heard them say Dual like a million times, I'm just gonna refer to it as the RGB Dual from now on. So apologies if that gets annoying. So this was on Kickstarter back in December and I backed it and it's June now and it's just arrived uh, about a week or two ago. So before I continue with the video, what is the RGB Dual? So it's a hat that connects to your Raspberry Pi device and it allows you to output video using a VGA or SCART. So currently the Raspberry Pi has HDMI and composite out, but this adds the functionality of VGA and SCART. So why would you use this? So as you know, the Raspberry Pi is quite popular amongst emulation enthusiasts, especially for those that use operating systems such as RetroPie or Lacquer or Recalbox. So attaching this device onto your Raspberry Pi allows you to hook it up to a CRT TV or a, a VGA PC monitor. You can comfortably use your Raspberry Pi on, a, on an HD flat panel screen, you know, with no issues, but if you are anything like me and you prefer to play your retro games on a CRT screen, the way God intended, this device can facilitate that. So the RGB Dual isn't anything new, well at least the concept of it. There are other devices in this market space that can provide similar functionality. So devices like the Pi to SCART, the RGB Pi and RG Berry. But what piqued my interest about the RGB Dual is that it's plug and play, so that it really isn't any configuration required. So as long as you're using Recal box as your operating system. You just snap this onto your Raspberry Pi and you're pretty much ready to rock and roll. So I'll give you a quick tour of the device. So firstly, we have a SCART socket up here. This is for video output, very commonly used in uh, the United Kingdom and Europe. On this side, we have a VGA socket. So if you want to output video to a PC monitor, however, this does not carry sound, whereas the SCART socket will carry video and sound. Next to the VGA socket, we have a little push button. And uh, so if you've shut down your uh, Raspberry Pi device and you've still got power running through it, you can just push that little button and it'll wake up your Raspberry Pi device. So it's like having a little power switch on your uh, Raspberry Pi. At the bottom, we have the uh, GPIO uh, socket. This is the primary interface that connects to your Raspberry Pi. Uh, I forgot to mention right uh, behind the uh, wake up switch, you actually have two uh, pin headers, which you can just about see right here. And that can be used to connect like an external uh, on-off switch for your Raspberry Pi. So if your case supports it, uh, you can also interface on those uh, two pin headers. Over here, we have some more pin headers, and these can be used to connect uh, a fan to your Raspberry Pi if you want to provide some extra cooling. Now down here, it's uh, very small, might be a little bit difficult to see, but there are two dip switches, so one at the top and one at the bottom. With the top dip switch, if you leave it to the left, it will uh, let the hardware decide whether the video output should be 50 or 60 hertz, and if you flick it to the right, you can uh, force 50 hertz. The bottom dip switch determines whether you're outputting using the SCART or the VGA, essentially. So flick to the left, you have 15 kilohertz, which uh, outputs to the SCART, and if you flick it to the right, you get 31 kilohertz, which outputs to the uh, VGA socket. So I believe the 15 kilohertz is in reference to the 240p SCART, and the 31 kilohertz is in reference to the uh, 480p uh, VGA. Right, so now I'm gonna show you how to connect this to your Raspberry Pi. What you wanna do is connect the GPIO socket here to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. So you just line them up, and then very gently just press it down. Now on the front here, you'll notice some plastic legs and you just wanna make sure that they line up to the holes there. I still need to get a heat sink for my Raspberry Pi, so I'm not gonna push these plastic uh, legs all the way in just yet because it's very difficult to remove them. Now earlier on, I mentioned that the VGA does not support sound, whereas the SCART does. Now, one of the cool things about the uh, RGB Dual is if you do have VGA plugged in, it enables the 3.5 millimeter jack hit output audio. So you can plug your like headphones in there or uh, an external sound bar or speakers or, or whatever, you, whatever you use. 
yeah, and that's the installation of uh, your RGB Duel. It's very simple. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, this is plug and play, but only if you've got Recalbox installed. Now, if you're an early adopter of this device, like I am, you need to download the, the beta version of Recalbox in order for this to be supported. I'll leave a link in the description below. So here is a quick comparison between a Raspberry Pi using the RGB Duel and a Raspberry Pi using Composite. Now, if you want to learn how to set up composite video output, I've got a couple of videos linked here. As you can tell, uh, while both images are pretty good, the composite output is slightly fuzzier and a lot of the vertical lines tend to appear jagged. However, all the straight vertical lines on the RGB Duel appear to be perfectly straight with uh, no jagginess or fuzziness. And here is the RGB Duel against original NES hardware, also using composite. And again, if you compare the pipes on both of the images, you'll notice that original hardware also has very uh, jagged lines. Now, I know you can modify original hardware so it has RGB output. However, the NES I'm using is just stock without any modifications. So generally speaking, this is the video quality that most NES owners will experience. And here is the RGB 2L outputting to a VGA monitor. One of the cool bits of functionality is it can output 240p at 120 frames per second, which means there's less screen flicker to experience. You can also output at 480p at 60 frames a second, which means you can actually run Dreamcast games the way they were intended to be played. So for those of you that enjoy a little bit of scanline porn, here are some samples of scanlines at 240p. Now my biggest issue is the second dip switch at the bottom. Now as I mentioned earlier, this allows you to switch between VGA and SCART. Now I wish there was some kind of functionality in here which would automatically detect which one of these had a cable plugged into them because currently, I mean, I'm using a, a very fine needle to flick that switch and I can't help feeling that at some point in the near future I'm gonna accidentally break it. So I'm trying to stick to one or the other, but it would have been great if that was kind of hardware managed and and there was some level of auto detection. However, it's not a deal breaker, but hopefully when version two of this device comes out, uh, it will, you know, there'll be some degree of auto switching there. I've been gaming since the NES days, and I tell you what, after using this device, a lot of those games feel brand new to me again, and I'm incredibly happy with the image quality, to the point where I've actually packed away my NES Mega Drive, Game Boy, and N64. The team at Recalbox should be very proud of themselves, and I'm very happy that I backed this on Kickstarter. Well done to the developers of the RGB Duel. I hope you found this video useful. Please do support the channel by subscribing. This has been Retro Crisis. Thank you for watching.